listening to The Train Gods. What's going on, player? Profile Nation, welcome to another episode of the Trade Gouds. I'm your host, Matty Kiwum, and I'm joined by my right hand man, my fellow Trade God brethren, Jason Allwine. What is going on, Jay? Dude, nothing too much. It's another Thursday night, ready to break down some trades as always. Woo! Ooh, we got a, such a good episode lined up tonight. We have a bunch of trades that we are going to dive full on head first. Maybe we'll go pencil dive or we'll go head first. It doesn't matter. Ooh. We're going to dive full on into all these trades. And we have a couple of buy and sell candidates. We also have a very special guest. Jason, tell our listeners who is coming on with us tonight. Oh, we've got our man. We, we've dug. He had us onto, our, into, onto his own show. The commissioner mm-hmm. evaluation a few weeks ago. So go check that out. I'm sure he'll plug it on later on. But this is John McGlynn75 on Twitter. He's in the Trade Gods Invitational League. He's doing a show a day, as he was telling us earlier mm-hmm. today. So go check him out. Make sure you give him a follow. But he's joining us right now. Boom! Big Woo! John in the building. Let's go. <laughs> How's it going, John? The best move I ever made was answering a tweet that said, who wants to join this trade gods league? And I'm like, man, I make about a thousand trades. This just sounds like it's right up my alley. And I tell you what, meeting you guys and a bunch of other guys in your league, it, it, it was probably the best move I ever made on Twitter. And I've been on Twitter for five or six years now. And mm-hmm. thank you guys so much just for what you guys do on that individual league. That, I, that I, This is my first ever non-home league, just so you know. So Ooh, uh, wow. it's, uh, all of my yeah. leagues, all of my leagues, like I, I, I guess – the, the thing that's special about my commissioner evaluation show that you guys had talked about earlier is I run a series of home leagues called the Mighty McGlynn Dynasty Leagues. They're 12 team, 30 player, super flex, tight end premium leagues. You guys were the first 14 team league I was ever in. And that's why I joined because I'd never been in a 14 team league before. Mm-hmm. So uh, all my leagues are little riddled with friends I've known since kindergarten, content creators I met from the Chicagoland area. It's all in person stuff. I had Mike Teglier and James Abranca Tools in my league. They both passed away, unfortunately. But mm. all the other guys in my league, P2W, Nick Scriff from P2W Fantasy, Scott Lillo, Cielo from Dynasty Junkies, Kyle August from Dynasty Warzone. He's just new to the, the player profile. Brand. Yeah. Uh, Steven Johnson from Scott Fishbowl Avatars, Ryan Williams from FanDuel, Pat Fitzmorris from Fantasy Pros, and this year's one, Jason Taylor, uh, you know, worked for DLF and Dynasty Pros, Adam Hutchinson, Nate Powell from DLF. Like, all my leagues are riddled with awesome hometown talent. And I just – those leagues are awesome because they're in person. But for an online league, you guys could not have made it more special for me, man. It's, it's just a great experience. Thank you very much for having me. Well, that's tonight's episode because I can't take this many compliments in the first five minutes of the show. John, you're too sweet. And honestly, it was one of the best things ever for us that you did join TGIF because – I mean, you've you've been an integral part making that league so much fun, except for the fact where you never accept my trade offers when I send it to you at 1130 at night, hoping that you've had a couple of brewskis in you and you just hit accept blindly. But that's hey, 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 I, well, I'm always do? I'm almost I'm that guy that's almost always available. because I work a 12 four on four off rotating 12 hour shift. So I am always always mm-hmm. like up i sleep like four hours at a time so i'm sitting there i i, I answered 17 i counted and re, you know rejected it and accept two trades today as a matter of fact i got a quick story you got time for a quick story of course i traded i was trying to get a guy who's in a rebuild i, I tried to trade him 202 um i, I trade i sent 202 to him for uh um uh, who, who the hell is that? i sent 202 for um a derrick henry earlier today and i'm like Okay, there's no way this guy's going to take it, but he's in rebuild, so I'll, I'll send him the, the number. Yeah. So in a different league, I have Derrick Henry, and that guy's got league 202. So we went back and forth in my original post, you know, and then he sent it back under the radar. Like, I thought, oh, okay, he looked at it a couple times. He finally took it. I accepted it, but it was in a different league, and I didn't. And I was also – I won that oh, league, and I won the other league, too. So I'm like, son of a bitch, I gave him a 202 for Derrick Henry. I don't want that. And I'm like, shit. So I, I – <laughs> I talked to the guy. He, and he the bamboozle. He, he totally bamboozled. He got me the worst. It was the worst ever. So I was oh, like, baby. I did not want to do that whatsoever. And it was, but the guy, thank God, I, I told him I'd buy your beer at the draft. We do an in-person rookie draft. <laughs> yeah. I got, I yeah. have to pay his beer at the draft for reject for returning the trade. But uh, yeah, it was, uh, 
<laughs> Dang, you're returning the trade? Okay, so then this episode is now officially over. Be- I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But I do have Rob in the chat, the Harry Snowman. He is also in TJF. He says he loves the yeah. Trade God Invitational. I yes. can't wait until that season truly kicks off because I think it's going to be fireworks. It's going to be so much fun. And we're so glad that you guys have come to tune into the Trade Gods with Jason, John, and myself. We got a whole bunch of trades to break down. We got buy and sell candidates. But before we dive in, let's hear from the Podfather talk about FFPC. You know, people always ask me, hey, what is the the World Series of Fantasy or the Super Bowl of Fantasy Football? And it's easy. It's the FFPC, the Fantasy Football Players Championship. It's a $6 million prize pool. And they've had their never-too-early best ball leagues cranking since February. And so the FFPC is the answer to so many questions. Hey, Hey, where's the best place to get a Dynasty Orphan? Well, you can adopt a Dynasty Orphan at the FFPC. That's why we partner with them. If you want to play fantasy football for low, medium, high stakes, seasonal, best ball, dynasty, go to the FFPC. And don't forget, promo code UNDERWORLD to get you $25 off your first team. $25 off your first team, no matter what team it is, no matter what format it is, at the FFPC. Go do it. If you're looking for some competitive leagues and pick up an orphan, head over to the FFPC and you can get your dynasty on today. Trade number one, boys. Let's dive head first. Ramondre Stevenson for Cam Akers and Juan Dale Robinson. John, what are your thoughts on this trade that comes from a 10-team PPR Superflex two tight end? Start 13. So we got some deep starting rosters. Mm-hmm. So I was stumbled a minute ago because I could have sworn who it was the trade for the 202 back and forth was actually for Madre Stevenson. So that was the uh, I messed up the the, sta- the trade. Whoa! Of the end, yeah, it was, so it's even big... worse. <laughs> so well, talk about Madre right here, my friend. This guy, I, I, the t- it's team A. It's for Madre Stevenson. I don't, this guy is, you know, he's fresh off 160 carries, 28 receptions in college only. This this is the definition of fresh coming out of you know coming out of college, getting ready for the NFL. He's averaged 171 carries a year in the NFL. He's had a lot. He's got a lot of tread left on his tires. He's got 69 receptions last year. Lost to Damian Harris as an early down competition. I'm all in on Ramadre Stevenson, especially when it's an offer that gives me a 10 and a five for a 20 dollar bill. That is Ramadre Stevenson. No way. I'm taking Ramadre 100 percent on this trade. Ooh, Ramondre's a, a fan. He's a favorite over here at Player Profile. Billy is all in. So to hear that, hmm, very, very exciting. Jason, what are your thoughts on this trade? Yeah, I mean, you've been asked me a year ago. I might have been like, oh, I love me some Cam Akers and everything. And he did finish off the year strong. And you know, he went on a tear there to, to end the season, won some people some championships. But still, I'm with John here. I've got to go the Ramondre Stevenson side. Just because we know what that upside is, and it's a really, really good upside, especially in PPR leagues. He's really just the running back on the Patriots. I know that we expect James Robinson to take something away. But still, we don't know what's really going on with the New York Giants. And I just can't really quantify Wandale yet. It feels like a little bit of a throw-in when you're when Ramondre's already the best asset, probably by a decent margin here. So it's just not enough for me. Yeah, I I would... I'm not a, you know, Jason, you know, I am on the team sell Ramondre this yeah. season because, you know, Patriots guy, Patriots <laughs> guy. I've watched a lot of Patriots games. Bill yep. does not like to use bell cow backs. Uh, last year might be an anomaly. I mean, this, their offensive coordinator was a former defensive line coach, defensive coordinator, failed head coach, Matt Patricia. So now that they have a real OC in the building and Bill O'Brien, what what capacity will they use Ramondre? Will they kind of use him in all facets like last year? Will it be a little bit more pass heavy, a little more uh, between the tackle stuff? I'm not sure. I am. I'm not necessarily giving Ramondre away for 85 cents or 75 cents on the dollar, yeah. but I am looking to sell. And Cam Akers is a back that I would be interested in acquiring for Ramondre Stevenson. But boys, you are completely correct when you talk about Wandell Robinson. I just don't know what I'm getting from Wandale. Yeah. He's not enough of a second piece that is going to make me trade to Ramondre Stevenson because although I do have a lot of sell Ramondre in my uh, in my being, he still was efficient. 
third in evaded tackles, 13th in breakaway run rate. He had the sixth most total breakaway run, so he is pretty efficient. I think his performance may not be fully repeatable as he was uh, running back 10 on a points-per-game basis, but top 14, top 15, definitely within the realm of possibility. So because I don't love Wandell, I'm taking the Ramondre Stevenson. This is a clean sweep for the Stevenson side here, boys. Uh, Yeah, yeah, the start 13... I, this is the type of league in which I definitely would sell a guy like Romandre if you could get a better second piece. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm a little bit more partial to a Elijah Moore, maybe a little bit more, you know, a little better in that range. So, uh, yeah, I'm with you guys in the, this this league. Give me the Stevenson side for for sure. So I get I get the start 13 thing, but I mean Romandre, it's pure strong and and Kevin Harris and Ty Montgomery and, and the depth chart on his team. <clears throat> I don't really see what's going to don't happen. Don't you disrespect <laughs> James Robinson on this very podcast. I've he's threatened a, the end of the show twice. He's a local if guy. You, if you besmirch James Robinson, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> he's done. No. No. Yeah, listen, I, 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 yeah. James Robinson's the man. He's definitely the best running back in New England. Yeah. But – I, like I said, I'm going to take Ramondre Stevenson, but if you can get a secondary piece that's better than Wandale, I may have to take it. Let's go to trade number two, boys. It is another running back trade, and it is also in a 10-team PPR. Superflex, two tight ends start 13. It's almost like it came from the same person. <laughs> And he is in the Discord, and like we said, get in the player profile of Discord to get your trades talked about here on the best trade show on planet Earth. But anyway, he acquired Derek Henry the King for the 202. John, how did you know about this? John, yeah. about mm-hmm. this. a 2025 third, which is essentially a bag of potato chips. Jason, what are your thoughts here when you see this trade? Yeah, you know, when you first look at it, you might be saying like, hey, I'm kind of getting away from Derrick Henry here. I'm getting a decent enough asset in the 202. And, you know, this is actually a first-round pick in a 10-team league. This is the 112, hey, right? Fair yeah. point. Very so good it's point. It's the 112. But you know what just launched this week? Oh, I wish my green screen didn't block that out. The Injury Finder app. Oh. <laughs> and you might be asking yourself, well, just how fragile is Derrick Henry? You know, we're – he, he's getting older, he's recovering from that injury, and I was very shocked to see. You know, he's not, he's only carries a 54.7% injury risk and has a four fragility rating, which is actually really, really low. You have to scroll down pretty far to even find him on the list of fragile running backs uh, just because of his build. He's right up there with Damian Pierce, Miles Sanders. David Montgomery are around the same kind of fragility as him. So, you know what? It might be still worth riding King Henry, really, for me. I think you just keep rocking and rolling with him, man. A hundred percent. I don't really have much to add. King Henry has enough in the tank that you should definitely take him. I don't care if it's 10 team, 12 team, 14 team. Mm -hmm. You want Derrick Henry over these picks. In his entire career, only 2021 stands out as a season which was plagued by injury. The rest are talking 14, 16, 16, 15, 16, 8, and then 16. So my man is on the field. Give me Derrick Henry. John, what do you think about this trade? Uh, I'm going to say this is kind of a trick question because if I'm in win now, I'm going to go with C. If I'm in win now, I'm taking Derrick Henry. If I'm in a rebuilding team and I'm looking to get rid of my assets, I'm taking the picks for sure. So if you start, is this falling, enough for you though? If you possess Derrick Henry and you're looking yeah. to rebuild, is this enough for you? Are you hitting the decline on this? You know the problem is with Derrick Henry is people who have him overvalue him, and the people who want to get rid of him don't want to sell him for peanuts either. So it's kind of like, shh, uh, I, I myself, like uh, you know, like Jason said a minute ago, this is a pick ten, not pick twelve. So I think uh, in reality, yes. I, I mean, I, it's it's. I'll tell I would I would get rid of him for the 202 because just because of the fact that he might only this might be his last year with any kind of production, especially what if he gets traded before the week week uh the week eight deadline, you know, this year. Mm-hmm. There is definitely precedent for that now. That's that's going to year. that's probably going to happen because they 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 have nothing left anymore. They have a, a tight end, a wide receiver, and a running back. And if any of those three trifecta goes down, like this team is just right from going right 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 to heck in a handbasket. So I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna go away. I'm going to go away from Derrick Henry and I'll take the pick and I'll start my rebuild with, you know, Roshan Johnson or something like that, you know, with that pick. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, to both of your points, like you po- like you mentioned, it's the it's equivalent to most teams one twelve, uh, yeah. because you know your standard league out there is probably about twelve team league. So the the this two oh two and a ten teamer is like the one twelve, which is Kendra Miller territory, Devon A chain territory, Roshan Johnson territory. So yeah. John, you think that you know A chain, Roshan, Kendra? Would you take any of those three backs over Derrick Henry in a rebuild? Man. In a rebuild, yeah, I I I think Hendry is probably the 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 guy there. I think everybody's going nuts about A chain. I think he's too small. No, thank you. So I I, I love Roshan, but it's just there's too many there's too much shit going on, you know, it, it, with the Bears right now for to see who's going to pile out there. And Roshan, you know, he hasn't really proven himself yet. He's you know he mm-hmm. he's a great complimentary back, but we haven't seen him in a leadership role yet. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm I'd probably go Kendry Miller at that point in time. But uh, man, you got to do what you got to do, and uh, like uh, if you pass up this two hundred two, and Derrick Henry gets traded, and he ends up in some committee back system where he's only getting the ball fifth to twelve times a game or eight times a game, never catch any passes, you're gonna punch yourself in the face every day for not making that trade. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Kendra would probably be the one that I'd want of those three as well. So we're on, mm-hmm. we're on the same page there. Even though Romandre, I do love Romandre, but maybe not straight up for Derrick Henry. Let's move on to the number, the third trade. We're gonna break down tonight. This is an absolute bang. Ooh. Ranger. This Ooh. is a 12 team PPR Superflex start 11, so a very standard uh, Superflex league. Team A is acquiring the man, the myth, the mother effing legend, Patrick Mahomes. And to get him, he's sending away six total assets Kirk Cousins, Daniel Dimes, DJ Moore, Albert Akue Bunam, Van Jefferson in a 2024 first. John, what are your thoughts here? And which side are you taking in this blockbuster for Patrick Mahomes? By far, this is the hardest trade. Uh, you, this is this. Is, if I'm a fish, you threw this worm in the sea, and I'm looking at it, man. <laughs> I am like, uh, it's like throwing a beer can to a guy on a hot summer day, cutting the grass, kind of thing, man. Okay, it, I'm not gonna lie, this was so tempting. But in two years, when I still have Mahomes and Cousin and Jones are washed, and the Bears have drafted another bad quarterback uh, to throw to DJ Moore and. And, you know, that 24 would probably never be generational like Mahomes. Unfortunately, I'm just going to stick with Patrick Mahomes here. You're going to stick with the stud talent. Jason, what are you doing here? I think you've probably got to stick with Mahomes here. But, I mean, it's a really, really good haul. Both teams are coming out of out of this still being competitive. That one team getting Mahomes, may, probably making them even more competitive than they were. But this team is more than likely needed some wide receiver help. Probably only had Mahomes decided to go for two quarterbacks that are actually startable. So it works out for, for both sides. But, I mean, it's Patrick Mahomes. You're going to have him for just for so long. And uh, it's we've talked about it a lot, like 20 bucks for 100 bucks kind of thing. Uh you know, about five twenty dollar bills. So yeah, it's, I hear uh, you saying. You know, the Van Jefferson on here really kind of makes it tempting. You know, that's you know that's. They got to do Van Jefferson. In. That's the cherry on yeah. top, right? It's, so <laughs> I'm looking at this here, this very trade, and I think Jason knows where I'm going with this. And my boy Huskers in the chat, we are in a startup right now, and it's a dog fight in there. So uh, you know, Husker, get out of this. Don't, you know, get out of this channel. You can't be listening to this good advice I'm about to give. I'm just kidding. But I look at this trade, and I'm going to go the opposite way, guys. I'm no. taking the package. Uh, I am taking the package. I think I'm getting two, 12, uh, two top 12 quarterbacks uh, this year and potentially in a year after that in 2024 as well. And you boys already know that I am contractually obligated to side with all DJ Moore trades. You guys know <laughs> that. I cannot go against DJ Moore. Now, Alberto might be a bit of a, a – a, a, a nothing, yeah. And Van Jefferson, well, I mean, people are talking like Puka Nakua is going to take his role. So obviously he's nothing special. But I do also have that 24 first. And, I mean, giving away all of these assets for Mahomes, I'm assuming he's fancying himself a, a top half of the draft. So the, the first is probably a back end of the first round uh, pick. I, I, I get that. But in start 11, give me the two quarterbacks that I'm going to start. And give me the the receiver that I think can ascend to that top fifteen, top twelve level, 
And then the other pieces I'll just have on my team if I need to make something else happen. So I'm going to take the package. But again, I can understand why you'd want to acquire the best quarterback uh, of this uh, generation and the most talented arm we've seen in and pretty much maybe since Dan Marino. So I get that. I get that. But you're right. This is a very, very close trade. Let's move on to the fourth trade here. Antonio Gibson. Ooh, John, we're going to talk a little bit about Antonio Gibson. And if you don't want to give away a lot of Antonio Gibson stuff, maybe you might have more about him later in the show. But to get him, it's a 210 and the 311. John, what are you taking on this team? Do I really have to answer this question? Nope, you don't. Jason, what do you think about this trade? It's Antonio Gibson. It's Tony G. It's my man, Gibby. No way am I only taking a 210 and a 311. I'm definitely riding the upside there with Antonio Gibson, 100%. DJ Moore is going to bust. Senior football, I mean, could you be any more wrong? No, you could not. Senior football, I get it because I was thinking the same thing. Like, DJ Moore, even if the Bears – even if the Bears, This show is over. Even if the Bears pass, like, 20% more than they did last year, they're still going to be, like, the third worst passing team in the league. Like, I I don't get – like, people think of DJ Moore is going to get, like, 175 targets and become, like, a wide receiver one. Like, I'm not digging it, man. Like as the new quarterback, it's a terrible system. They don't, they don't pass the ball at all. Uh, it's I, I I love DJ Moore too. Don't get me wrong. I get DJ Moore everywhere except in your league because you guys are. So I'm not going to say it out loud, but you know it's uh, <laughs> I, I just I, I I love DJ Moore, but it's going to take a year or so of growth with somebody. Maybe even next year with a new quarterback for uh, for that to happen. But I, but anyway, we're talking about this trade right now. Antonio Gibson, give me a give me give me Tony G. Uh, Gibby, my 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 man crush, all that stuff. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna give you a whole lot here, other than this is a Gibson trade and it's an absolute smash. Uh, Twelve team half point PPR superflex no ten end premium start eleven. Give me all the Antonio Gibson that I can handle when it comes to this trade. I'm looking to buy Tony Gibson anywhere that I can. But we're, we're going to talk a little bit more about Gibson later on the show. So let's get to the next trade. By the way, thanks for Tony Gibson in our league, Jason. I appreciate it. Oh, yeah, thank you for, thank you for Ritter. <laughs> yeah, you thank can you. have Ritter, buddy. Yeah, man. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. So this is also a 12-team half-point PPR Superflex Start 11 Dynasty League. Team A is receiving Rashard White in the 205, and he's trading away the 211 and the 111 in this year's rookie draft. John, which side are you taking? Man, it's Team A, but I'm I'm not happy about it. The only reason I'm 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 doing it because of White's opportunity in Tampa. There's no competition besides besides Sean Tucker, who's you know I think he's a little bit underrated. Chase Edmonds and Keyshawn Vaughn, but a, a veteran ad like Lombardi Lenny or Kareem Hunt or Zeke Elliott would just tank his value instantaneously. So uh, to win now with White, anything else I take the picks. Jason, uh, the the two hundred five is definitely what sets me apart. I think I would take the one eleven and the two eleven for Rashad White. But then to also get that 205 with Rashad White, I think you actually could come out with some nice players. Sometimes A-Chain falls, sometimes Roshan falls, sometimes Kendra falls. And then, you know, I'm a fan of the Sam Laporta. Uh, I know it's not tight end premium, but still a fan. So anyway, I'm taking the Rashad White 205 side because of that extra pick. I think that's really nice. Yeah, that extra pick absolutely drives it home for me. Give me the Rashad White side, and I think it's not even close because I think if Rashad yeah. White was available at the 111 straight up, you would take Rashad White with a bullet. And then you're mm-hmm. talking about 205, 211. Again, I'm not the smartest guy in a given room, but I'm <laughs> pretty sure 5 does come before 11, so you yeah. would theoretically get your pick of the better player that you prefer six picks ahead. So give me that 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 trade. I think it was a great way to utilize uh, the hype of draft picks after the NFL draft and really capitalize because you're going to come away with Rashad White and let's say, I don't know, who's at the 205? Who are we talking about here in super flex formats? Could you get uh, Sam Laporta, like you mentioned, Jason? Could you get Roshan at the 205? Jaden Reed at the 205? I think these are all possible in your home league. So give me Rashad White, and it's not even – all that close for me boys anything about this trade before we move on to the sixth trade no i think it's uh it all depends on what happens with white and the rest of that backfield but i get you guys i understand what you're saying do you do you guys think that there is do you think sean tucker could threaten uh rashad white you do 100 percent Talk yeah. about it. Elaborate on that because I would love to hear because Sean Tucker was someone that I loved during the NCAA season. 
But of course, the 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 draft process was not all that great for him because of potential heart condition or another injury. He wasn't able to work out the combine. He kind of gave this weird kind of fugues pro day on YouTube. Uh, but I liked him when I watched him play at Syracuse. So yeah, go dive into that a little bit, John. It, do you think that? He could threaten Rashad White in terms of touches, whether it be rushing or receiving. Receiving is going to be a problem, but I just feel like Rashad White is – I mean, we kind of saw him in action. He just he runs in the line and bumps into people. He's not really – he doesn't see the hole very well. I don't think Rashad White is a good running back. I think it's just his opportunity. Like I said, if somebody else comes in there and is able to take, I mean, anything, be a, th- a third man in that, in that committee and possibly take some of the, the receiving work away from Rashad White – I, I think that Rashad White is super overrated right now. I, I don't think he's a very good running back. Receiving back, blocking back out of, out of the backfield, different story. But And that keeps you on the field. But at the same time, I don't think Rashad White is not, is not the answer, is not the long-term answer for Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think he's you know the guy that's there right now. He's going to get a bunch of work early. But I think the true color is going to come out, and he'll be supplanted by halfway through the season. You know, looking at his performance profile in 2022, you're right, John. It wasn't – all that efficient. It was a lot supported by a ton of targets from Tom Brady, who is, yeah. you know, he's been known to check down uh, for a lot of his career. So, you know, Baker's not that guy. So you do bring up a pretty good point, but I think I'm still taking Rashad, but that is true. Cause if it's Kendra versus Rashad and if, Umar, you know, you know, Kamara gets suspended for eight games tomorrow morning. Maybe, 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 maybe. All right, John, you're. This is why we had you on the show, John, because we, we, you know, we value your fantasy mind, and now you're getting my mind turning a little bit. So I'm going to think about this, but let's let's move on to the next trade. Marquise Hollywood Brown and Keenan Allen for Michael Pittman in a 24 second round pick. This is a 12 team PPR Superflex start 11. Jason, which side are you taking when it comes to this trade? It's tough. It's really tough. I don't want to give up on Keenan Allen yet, but if I am, getting Michael Pittman seems fair enough, and I think getting a 24 second for Marquise Brown is fair enough. So I think I'm on the Pittman side, but again, I do love me some Keenan Allen. You know, I kind of just want to ride the wave, but you obviously there's one team that doesn't want to quite buy into the Anthony Richardson hype or at least accept that he's going to be able to give Michael Pittman a ton of volume. So they're they're kind of moving away, going to the older asset there. But for me, I'm still going with uh, with, with good old Pittman in the 24 second. John, what do you think here? Oh, it's 100% percent Michael Pittman side. Mm-hmm. The, this is the first time I would be on the board to break the shutout, but I love Pittman. <laughs> even in a second, you know, <laughs> even if the second wasn't evolved, I'd still take the Pittman side, I think. I, I feel like it, this, he's uh, super underrated. The Cardinals yeah. are a dumpster fire with no quarterback. Will Levis has a chance to open Pittman's potential. I, I'm 100% on Pittman this year. This isn't even close to me. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm going to take this Pittman side with a bullet as well. I feel like a lot of these trades tonight, like the second trade was probably the closest, like you said, John, that is probably the one that I thought had the uh, fairest split in terms of what players were going which way. Yeah. I'm going to take the Pittman side here. Hollywood Brown, though, if Murray was back for the entirety of the season, I think it would sway mm-hmm. my opinion a little bit, but I think we all agree. I mean, how many games does Kyler Murray play this year, guys? If he does, if he gets hurt, I mean, if he comes – Let's just say the Cardinals start out like one and six or one and seven or something. What's the reason? What's what are you bringing them back for? He might right. not play the whole season. Right. If, they, if they start taking their and they're absolutely fucking terrible. So like yeah. there's not there's nothing there's no reason to rush right. him back. And on top of that, I think they don't like him. I, I mean, they've already put stuff in his contract to say he's got to study. You know, he doesn't pay attention. You know, he's not on the field all the time. He creates problems sometimes. You know, like. Like I, I don't think they, I don't think Kyler Murray is a long term answer in Arizona, and I think I mean there's rumors of him going back to baseball because football is not made for it, meant for him. I don't think his head's in the game all the time. He's kind of a knucklehead sometimes. Like don't get me wrong, the guy for a small dude, he's got he's super talented, but at the same time, I, I'm not a big, I, I'm no way, not a chance. I think he sits the entire year and possibly gets moved after that. Ooh, I I put I actually tweeted this the other day. Like, could he be moved aside? Because Vegas has the Cardinals projected to have the first and second overall pick now that they have the Houston Texans first rounder. Uh, so you know if they do have the first round pick, 
I mean, the you're first not passing up pick. Caleb Williams to get. You're not passing up Caleb Williams, right? Can you not pass? But no, there is eighty nine million dollars dead cap if you move on from Kyler Murray. Ninety million dollars in dead cap next year if you were to move him. So maybe money talks and they decide to give it back to Kyler. But you know, I think either way, because of and we have in the chat caught yeah, Kyler Murray loves to play himself some Call of Duty for <laughs> sure. No, no doubt about it. But yeah, I think we're all on the the Michael Pittman side uh, mm-hmm. of this trade. So uh, Michael Pittman, take him because you, like you said, John. If Anthony Richardson does unlock that really big play potential, it, you know, Michael Pittman has had, he's averaged about 860 yards in a given season, and he's had washed up quarterback after washed up quarterback. Yeah. So this infusion of young talent with, with a laser rocket arm might be exactly what the doctor ordered. Now we have one final trade to break down for each and every one of you here tonight, and it's a special one because it's one trade that someone on this very show has Ooh. made in one of their leagues. Bada boom, bada boom, bada boom. Team A is acquiring Darren Waller, Kyler Murray, who we just talked about, Deontay Johnson, the 104 in this year's rookie draft, and the 304 in this year's rookie draft. And to get these, this uh, treasure trove of assets, this team traded away Trevor Lawrence. It is a 12 team PPR Superflex. Uh, 0.75 tight end premium and a start 10. Jason, what do you think about this trade, my man? I don't understand trading for Darren Waller and Kyler Murray together because they're deferring assets. Um, so I, but I mean, if Darren Waller turns out and actually works out with the Giants and stays healthy and everything, gonna be a great for fantasy. We just talked about why we're not that high on Kyler Murray. Deontay Johnson should get some touchdown positive positive touchdown regression but i still like george pickens more in that offense 104 is pretty good perhaps well yeah that's your pick at quarterback right Bijan, anthony richard not your pick but you get cj stroud or bryce young so that's not the worst thing in the world and a fun coupon with the 304 but i'm pretty high on trevor lawrence i, I think he's officially arrived and i think he's just going to end up being the guy that we all expected him to be for a long time and i think you've just got to go with that guy and not wait on you know the third quarterback take in and some assets that kind of cancel each other out john i'm going to let you speak here in a second <laughs> okay i see that hand up i'm going to let you speak here in a second but i'm going to go ahead and, and talk about this trade because i this is one of the rare occasions where my trade god brother and i just simply are not seeing a trade eye to eye usually our values are pretty simpatico yeah but tonight <laughs> I think you're off here, my friend. I like Trevor Lawrence here. I do oh, value awesome. him as a top, you know, five to seven quarterback in your mm-hmm. Superflex leagues. But look at this treasure trove of assets. Darren Waller could finish as high as a top five tight end in this league. Uh, you know, given all the, you know, there's a lot of pip squeaks in this in, in, on that mm-hmm. offense, and you got big Darren Waller, Kyler Murray. Uh, you know, I'm not a huge fan of him, but I do believe that this is one of the most accurate passes in the league. He's a, a Konami mm-hmm. code quarterback and should be back at 2024, the latest. I think Deontay Johnson's one of my favorites going into this year, given his value. There's almost a 100% certainty that he does have some positive tight end regression, given the fact that he had zero. Uh, last year, I think that goes up exponentially this mm-hmm. year in this offense that is ascending. 304, we keep talking about how we love picks at the end of this draft, just these darts that you can take in the end in your third and fourth round of your draft. So give me a 304. I think that's not nothing. And the 104? Ooh, yeah. that is a very good pick. I mean, you could take a quarterback. Maybe you want to take Jameer Gibbs. Maybe you want to take JSN or Jordan Addison, but you are in the driver's seat to come away with a very valuable asset in Dynasty. So I think I'm going to take this package, uh, given the fact that you might be able to survive without Kyler, but you know, maybe if you flip Kyler, that's a possibility, and you can win right away in 2023. I'm going to take the assets. John, why yeah. don't you go ahead and take the reins here? What do you think about this trade? A, it's my trade. Yeah. <laughs> Big surprise. B, I love Trevor Lawrence, and it was very hard to make this trade, but yeah. I knew I was – there's a guy I'm in two leagues with, 
that loves Kyler Murray and he thinks Kyler Murray is going to be the end. So I knew the end game of here. I was going to get trade Kyler Murray. On top of that, I already have Josh Allen. I already have Patrick Mahomes on this league also. So really, Trevor Lawrence is just sitting on my bench almost every week, wasting space. So I got all that for him. I I, I needed to, to trade something on my team to yeah. get other positions, get some depth. I really needed a tight end. So while I, if I'm, I'm in, I won the league this year, I came in second place two years ago. This is the third year. I, I, the guy who was in with me for the last two years, he had a bunch of injuries, traded his team away. So I'm in the driver's seat now to win again. And if I win the league, it's pays for the next eight years of you playing when you win a league. That's kind of how that works, you know. So you win 70%. Wow. So that, that's the way I look at it. 70% yeah. is eight years of, of entry fees. And I got draft picks. I really needed a tight end. I knew I was flipping Kyler ASAP. So I traded Kyler, the, the 104 away at Skymore. I got Deshaun Watson, which is pretty much, I think, is an upgrade over, over, over Kyler because Deshaun Watson is going to play all year long. And he's super underrated right now. I got Javis Williams, the 202, the 307. And I, I'm like, all right. So I, I figured I like Jameson Williams. I think he's worth the 104, 105, 106. And the only way I was getting him was to trade him for that, that 104 to throw him with, with, with Kyler. So I figured Deshaun Watson was an upgrade because he's going to play all season long. In case one of my other guys goes down, I'd have a, 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 a security blanket to plug in all year long in a super flex dynasty league. So that plugged yeah. in. That's why I got I added Jameson. So now on top of that, I got – I pretty much got Darren Waller, Jameson Williams, Deshaun Watson, Deontay Johnson to 304, uh, and something else here I got. I can't remember what the other thing was. But I, I got all this stuff packed up for just Trevor Lawrence in reality yeah. in, in the long term. So I traded on top of traded on top of traded, and I made my team. I, I added a championship team. I added like five yeah. really good pieces to it. So that's where I'm no, at. I, yeah, I mean, getting Jameson Williams definitely helps. Which, and uh, having Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes allows you to move on from Trevor Lawrence. Uh, Jameson Williams, if you look at like uh, if you look at the player profile or trade analyzer, he's only worth like eighty points or something yep. like that because he didn't play all last year. And Peter Howard says if you don't have you know if a guy doesn't play his first year, he's not worth anything. It's been proven that guys who don't score in their first year are pretty bad. Jameson Williams is a special talent, you know. Yeah. So I mean, he's special. He's and there's nothing else. That, I'm on Ross St. Brown. It's the other, only other thing in that passing game that's even going to compare to James Williams when he comes back. If something happens where he appeals to suspension, he gets less than six games, which I hope happens sometime soon. That they, it's been rumorville as far as that happens. I think I walked away from this whole thing with now I got Tra- Trevor Lawrence, Patrick Mahomes, and Deshaun Watson as my three quarterbacks. I think that's awesome. And, and my lineup is just stacked to the gills with with players. My I, my bench is stacked. My my starting lineup stacked. And, you know, if I can win, like I said, I win 70% of the league, the next eight years is paid for, I'm not going to start rebuilding. I'm just going to keep going, you know. So I'll keep winning the year after year, get in the playoffs, get my money back anyway. So, yeah. <laughs> Jason, hearing this additional context, does that make you like this trade? Um, does yeah. that make you side with the assets more? Yeah, d- yeah, yeah, it does. It does. Okay. I'm going to say, John, I think you should have stopped after this trade. I think getting Kyler Murray – uh, and kind of giving him this red shirt year, given your quarterbacks, would have been the move. Giving away the 104, I think James and William boys, we have to start tempering our expectations no. for James Williams. I think no. you boys, he's on hard OU. He plays for Dan Campbell. Dan Campbell grew sour to DeAndre Swift, who's a very electric. <laughs> I can't hear it. Let me – no, no. You need to hear this, boys. You need to hear this. Dan Campbell would not tolerate DeAndre Swift getting hurt. Do you think he's going to tolerate Jameson Williams, who came into the league hurt, which is not his fault. But, again, if he's going to dock DeAndre Swift for it, maybe he docks Jameson Williams for it. And you can bet your bottom dollar he will dock him for betting in the stadium, betting in the field. Boys, I think we need to start reeling back our expectations on no. Jameson Williams long term. Give me the 104 for Jameson Williams. I think it's not even close. I would rather have JSN over Jameson Williams. I'd rather have Jameer Gibbs over Jameson Williams. I'd rather have Jordan Addison than, Jim, than Jameson Williams. So give me that 104 with a bullet. Do you guys have anything to say before we wrap up the trade breakdown segment of the show? Well, you, shut your, you shut your mouth and you're talking to me. All right. That's a- <laughs> <laughs> There's not James you Williams at- just turned 22 years old. James Williams <laughs> yeah. just turned 22 years old. So I don't know what how, how this could be a problem. I, he's got a lot of he's got nothing. Everything in his profile says give me a, give this guy a chance to win. So yeah. whatever. 
Well, you no, know, I, I, had, I had to I, dramatically exit this podcast after you telling me to put my tongue up on you. So now that I'm back, okay. Maddie, what are you going to do when the first snap Jamison Williams takes post suspension is a 70 yard touchdown catch? Yeah. <laughs> What He's am I going to do? Bird. He's in Play the one. <laughs> I'm going to go like this for his subsequent 10 routes run where he gets zero fantasy points, and then it'll all come out in the wash. That's I'm saying I'm it now. Do. Jamison Williams' first game back from suspension, 150 yards and two touchdowns. Book it. I'm not going to go that far. But I'm going to say that he is the next Michael <laughs> Thomas. I'll, I'll go that far. Oh, he's better oh, than Michael, Michael Thomas. Tom- so you think uh, he's slant boy? I no, think he can take. He can see. No, he's he's a he's a fast receiver. He can get downfield really well. You know, as far as that goes. But I think he can make things happen. 10, 15 yards downfield, just make a little juke move, a little more than slants cross the field from a slot like Michael Thomas does, kind of thing. But man, I mean, he is magic to watch, and he's so fast. And like I said, he's only he just turned twenty two years old. I mean, I, I, we'll okay. See. Well, well, John, you're gonna have to come back on Trade Gods during the season. We'll talk a little. Jameson Williams, shall we? Shall we? Shall we? Okay. We shall. We shall. Off we absolutely side. shall. So that is going to wrap up the trade breakdown segment. Now let's dive into a little bit of what I like to call It's time to buy and sell. So today we got three candidates that we're going to start off talking about two buys and a sell. John, tell everyone listening why they need to. Why? Daniel Gibbs. Gibby. Eric Bietemi can probably just tell stubborn Ron Rivera to worry about the defense, and, you know, he'll take care of the offense. So he'll probably get six receptions out of the backfield. That's a minimum this year. His only competition was brought in was Chris Rodriguez. Rodriguez is like the Scooby-Doo criminal kind of thing. He's wearing a Brian Robinson mask. It's the same dude, you know, that like they catch him and it's the same guy kind of thing. Brian Robinson is just a plotter. So is Chris Rodriguez. <laughs> the only – as long as Gibby doesn't fumble, this could, he could be a league-winning back this year. Robinson looks like he's a rabbit – Robinson looks like he's a turtle running against a rabbit in the, like, like the race. You know, like when you see – when you see Antonio Gibson running on the field and you see, it, you know, the next play is Brian Robinson getting a pair, getting a touch, it's like a kid playing with his grandpa at the park. You know, like if they're so different as far as their speeds, their maneuverability, the things that happen mm-hmm. on the field. Gibson is just – he's going to he's gonna win this 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 – he played with injuries all last year, and he still made everybody look slow. This year, when he start, when he gets out of the backfield and you get that Eric Bieniemy passing offense and just dump offs to, to Robinson with no more competition, he's the only guy that catches the ball in this whole backfield right now. So it's going to be pass to him, dump off, dump off, dump off, and Gibby will be like, yes, MVP season, let's go. So Antonio Gibson is my buy right now. Plus, if you look at everybody is – yeah, they got a, got an inkling for, for Antonio Gibson, but – what is he going for? Like the 210? People are trading for like the 205, 207, 210. You know, like it's ridiculous. There you go. Give me. Tell everyone why, listening, why they need to buy George Pickens. Ooh. Well, you know, he's essentially the dog. Look at this video. This is my man watching him get drafted. Just. Anyway, what what a what a what a spectacle that was! What a spectacle this catch was! We'll watch it again here in slow motion. But there's more to it than yeah. just that. Last season, he only had a 76.5 percent snap share, only had a 15.6 percent target share. But from week four onward, he had more double-digit games. The non-double-digit games, a 16-point game, a 14-point game, a 6-point game, an 18-point game, an absolute stinker 0-point game, but then 14.5 points, 18.3 points, 10.7 points, 1.11 point, points, 17 points, 5 points, 16 points. Anyway, the picture is painted that this guy has shown that he not only can be consistent, will be consistent, shows incredible contested catches skills, uh, and is more of an alpha build then Deontay Johnson will eventually command more targets than Pat Fryermuth and Deontay Johnson also. Uh, and will probably be the alpha on this offense. I'll bet on that. There's him doing a little run play. They used him all sorts of ways. And, um, and yeah, I just, he's a guy I want to buy. He's really not that expensive at all either. Yeah, go okay. ahead. Okay, John, what you got? I traded away. Um, I, I got Kenny Pickett 
and uh, George Pickens for uh, what's it, Zach Wilson, like right at the beginning of last year. So it was it was my biggest grab like ever, like it was just a cash for nothing kind of. Wow. <laughs> you better want to watch out. The FBI might be after you <laughs> because that is a that's a heist. That's a, a heist if I've ever ever heard of one. Jason, are you are you worried at all that Kenny Pickett is not the guy? No, I I really do think he's fine. I I, I think he's fine. Uh, you know, he was just a rookie last year, but they didn't turn away from him. He's damn sure better than Mitchell Trubisky. So yeah, I'm 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 fine with Kenny Pickett. And you know, he's even a Pittsburgh guy. You know, literally went to Pitt. Like That's it's. It. it's they're so patient with their players and coaches and stuff. They wait for guys to develop. They don't really move on too often. You know, they, they were in a bridge bridge area between Ben Rossberger and Pickett, and they brought in, you know, somebody. But when they draft a guy, they take their time. You know, they, they let things ferment like fine wine. You know, they, they let it just turn into, you know, let the flower blossom. Waiting for this. <laughs> it's what's going to happen. I think it's Kenny Pickett's going to be just fine. It's going to be a year or two, get to know the system. He's got good receivers now. Everybody's on the same page, some better offensive linemen. You know, so we're, we're good, man. Okay. All right. Okay. I do have Kenny Pickett in the league. Uh, I have him starting in my super flex position. So I hope you're right because I've been a, a big naysayer of Kenny Pickett. But again, you boys are swaying me today. This is the theme of the show is you have smart people on the show so that they can sway your mind so you can truly get a all encompassing thought here. So let's, I'm going to talk about my sell candidate and it's Calvin Ridley. I'm selling. Calvin Ridley. Why am I selling Calvin Ridley? Well, he's just because he's he's at peak he's at peak value. We've talked about this on multiple shows, right? Why you should necessarily sell when guys at peak value. It's not always about uh, someone who you don't believe is as good as maybe his metrics say or his stats say or what your market tells you. But at the end of the day, I think Calvin Ridley's at peak value right now. He's uh, wide receiver thirty five on Player Profiler, uh, wide receiver thirty two on Keep Trade Cut. That is ahead of Chris Godwin, Deontay Johnson, Amari Cooper, DeAndre Hopkins, and Christian Kirk. Give me not one, not two, not three, not four, but give me all five of those wide receivers instead of Calvin Ridley. He hasn't played uh, since week seven in 2021. He's 28 in a, in a point four years old. He's actually right around the same age as Amari Cooper. And, and there are some in the community that believe that Amari is too old. So if you think Amari's old, well, then, I mean, you got to think Calvin Ridley is old as well. So I think I'm taking all five of those guys. And again, this is not a knock on Calvin Ridley's ability. He has shown that he could be efficient. He has a 1,400-yard uh, receiving season. Uh, I do like him as a player, but this is just an opportunity to trade a player away that has a slew of red flags at peak value. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to look to move Calvin Ridley where I can and truly cash in. Any of you guys have anything that you'd like to add about Mr. Ridley? Yeah, if, if I may. I, I mean, like... You may. <sighs> I don't, I don't think he's a buy. I'll agree with you there. But I f let's look at some names next to him. Let's. I want to throw you on the name game. I don't think I've thrown you on that one yet. <laughs> yeah. The name game. I love the name game. Throw me a name Ridley. game. All right. I'm going to just name you some players around Calvin Ridley's range. Okay. You tell me who you'd rather have. Uh, and I'll start you know, maybe above. Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper. Marquise Brown. Calvin Ridley. Marvin Mims. Calvin Ridley. Mike Williams. Calvin Ridley. You know I do not like Mike Williams. <laughs> but this is where it also gets interesting because it kind of picks back up. Jamison Williams? Calvin Ridley. I just talked about why about James. Jaden Reed? Calvin Ridley. Because I hope Jaden Reed becomes a Calvin Ridley. <laughs> Jonathan Mingo? Okay, so what did you what what range of receivers did you put me in? You made yeah, me a fan of Calvin Ridley. Where did that come from? Where did, where did Jonathan Calvin Mingo Ridley from? is thirty five? Those were wide receivers, thirty six through forty. Go up now. Go the other way. Okay, that was Amari Cooper at the top. Mar yeah. Okay, Quentin Johnston above that. See, I still would have Calvin Ridley here. Brandon Ayuk. Give me Calvin Ridley here. Ray Flowers. Give me Zay Flowers. I will take Zay Flowers. Christian Kirk? Christian Kirk. I said I'd take Kirk. 
Okay, Terry McLaurin. McLaurin. Okay, so this is yeah. so I do think that we have him aptly rated. Which again, I mean, Player Profiler has all of our yeah, rankings. right, I mean, right. We are we are the nuts when it comes to rankings. So uh, it would make sense that I am aptly uh, on par with our rankings. But uh, yeah, okay. So in, in terms of that value. Thank you again. Like, so I mean, again, the value of today's show is I think Miss I think I learned today that I, that you guys are really smart and I need to listen to you guys. I got burned the other day for saying Christian Kirk. Like people were like, "You're an idiot." What are you talking about? I love Christian you know, Kirk. Now, so do I. Like I don't. I, Ridley's going to take. I mean, really, you remember Ridley? He was real pouty about you know like, about playing football about everything. He was kind of. If you remember the last time he played, last couple games he really wasn't in the game. He was kind of pouting around the field. He had a problem with everybody. You know, like it's almost like he didn't want to play football. Or he had something going on in his head. So I hope he cleared all that stuff up and he comes back a better receiver right now. But. I don't really trust the guy right now. He's got to show me that when he gets back on the field, he's serious about football before I rate him any higher than that. Yeah, I guess what makes me a little confused is Calvin Ridley, Christian Kirk, they're teammates, but why all of a sudden are we assuming that Calvin Ridley is better than Christian Kirk? Christian Kirk last year had 1,100 receiving yards. That's coming off a season where he was just shy under 1,000 for Arizona. I think he's a baller. He's worked great with Trevor Lawrence. I mean, he's been... Uh, you know, inside of the top 30 receivers on a points per game basis each of the last two years. Last year was his quintessential breakout season. So I don't know why all of a sudden we're just going to give the reins of the alpha receiver in Jacksonville to Calvin Ridley when Christian Kirk is in town and Christian Kirk performed. Yeah, he was like, wait, he was a great number two behind Julio Jones, but I'm not sure that he's a sp- supposed to, that he's going to be the number one on that Christian Kirk be the number two, because I'm not sure he's meant to be that guy. He's a great number two, but I'm not sure. He's like a DJ Moore. He's a great number two, but he's not supposed to be like a number one. Chris Godwin, same way, that kind of thing. Those guys are fantastic as number two guys, but they're not really number ones. For sure. Uh, so that's actually going to wrap up our buys and sells. And that's going to wrap up the episode, boys. We did it. It was such a fun time hanging out with Jason each and every Thursday. It's such a delight. John, thank you so much for coming on. Take this time. You got the center stage. Plug all of your content. Plug everywhere where people can find you. Whatever you want. The floor is yours, my friend. John McGlynn at John McGlynn 75 on a Twitter machine. I do the commissioner evaluation episode. It's I started doing a bunch of home leagues and I'm like, you know what? I should talk about these home leagues, the trades I do, the things that go on, the people that's in them, have my guests on, talk about teams, evaluate teams, see what people should do to make the teams better. It turned into my own little podcast, which turns into a year round uh, a podcast now, a year round YouTube show. It's on the P2W P- uh, YouTube channel because Nick Scripps, my neighbor. So he lets me use his YouTube, so I don't, you know. <laughs> so you can borrow his bandsaw. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I use his YouTube, and uh, you know, I, I put my show on there, and you know, that's it. It's 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 uh, I just have a great time doing it, and I I I listen to, I, I listen to like fifty pod. I wear I have a job where I have earphones in, but or uh, earplugs in, but instead of earplugs, I put headphones in. All these shifts I work, I, I do nothing but listen to like fifty different podcasts. You guys, I mean, I, I everything that's on player profile is fantastic. You guys ought to get this on a podcast. So um, it's I, I just appreciate you guys having me. Being in your league is awesome. Being here with you two guys, I mean, it's just even a, even a text message before this this thing was started, it was it was even fun for me. So being in the league with you guys, <laughs> being on the show tonight was awesome. Uh, you know, I, I always text Cody and 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 Matt Kelly. I'm like, hey, if you're ever looking for somebody, I'm a free agent. You know, I, I put me on the show somewhere. I don't care. I'll just do I'll do records for somebody. I don't even care. I love player profile. But you guys, thanks for having me on here, man. This is uh, fantastic. This is a dream come true to be on a show with you guys. No, thank you so much for coming on and check out his show too. Because me and John, me and Jason did it uh, was about a month or so ago. It was a blast. It was a ton of fun. We hit so many different subjects for around the NFL. It was great. So definitely check that out, Jason. The floor is yours. Tell everyone where they can find you on socials and get all your content. Yeah, J Football Line on Twitter. Then of course the Roto Underworld Instagram Player Profiler Facebook, and then you can find me here every Thursday night talking about trades with the Trade God Brethren. Maddie Kiwoom, of course. And then if you want some extra just football talk in the mornings, Monday through Friday, 10 a.m., I've got the Wake and Take right here on this very YouTube channel. Absolutely. You can find me on Twitter. I'm at Maddie Kiwoom. Check out the game plan each and every Saturday. Jason is coming on this weekend, and we're talking about starting a new dynasty league. So all you commissioners out there tune in for that, but you can catch us every single Thursday. We are the trade gods. That's Jason. Allwine. I'm Matty Kiwum. We're the trade gods. See you next week. Peace.